Sally YouTube, welcome back to the Not Even Friend YouTube channel. Now, as you can see behind me, I'm not at home. I'm in France right now. This is my first Airbnb in Paris. I'm coming back in September. And of course, since arriving in France, I have been observing, perceiving, looking out for those culture shocks. And I actually just flicked a new video up last week talking about some of those first initial culture shocks that I had. Those like wow moments, like that's right kind of moments after arriving in France our first few weeks here. So definitely check that out to watch next if you haven't already seen it. Now in this video, not to be a negative Nelly, but I'm going to be talking about the things that I had kind of forgotten about and I'm like, oh, that's right. <laughs> the things I just don't really like about France, the things that I hated about living here, all those things that I've kind of been reminded are a thing about living here. And I was like, uh, yeah. Now I am very soon going to be going for my French nationality. So who would I to be able to claim to be French if I didn't know how to complain, right? <laughs> now, I don't want this to be a venti negative video, but it is true. It's part of, you know, living in a country. Not everything's perfect. We don't have to romanticize every single last bit about living in France. And I like to share it how it is. I like to share the reality. I like to tell it how it is because I think as well, some people can come here for the first time and be really shocked and be like, oh, it's a normal country after all, right? And so I'm going to be sharing with you some of these things. Let me know if you can relate in the comments down below or let me know how it compares to where you're from. Now, a lot of the reason that I can pick up on these subtleties and these, you know, the tone and, and things that I observe here and there is obviously because I've got a good grasp of the French language. And if you are on a language learning journey, if you are traveling somewhere, you know, if you are wanting to move somewhere, if you're wanting to explore a different culture or even just, you know, consume their media or whatever that looks like in a different language to get to know a culture better, then I just wanted to share with you that the Lingoda Sprint is open right now and the doors are going to close very, very soon. What is the sprint? It is the most incredible language learning accelerator. Essentially, it's a two month challenge where you can take either 30 classes per month for two months and get a 100% cashback, right? It's completely gamified or 15 classes per month for two months and get up to 50% cashback. And the reason they do this is because it's a game, it's a challenge, and it's bringing people together from all around the world to learn their chosen language. It can be French, German, Spanish, English, or business English. And they challenge you to get confident, to get fluent, and to speak your chosen language quickly. It's such an amazing event and loads of my subscribers have done it and they're very, very happy. And what makes Lingoda super cool is you learn anytime, anywhere. You're connected with native professors from all around the world, many different time slots of Available and that's why it worked for me because I could actually stick to it. And then the quality of the materials themselves, the lessons are really well done, you have homework, you can download the slides and you can actually work towards a pathway and if you get 90% of your levels, for example, you're going for level B2 in French, if you achieve 90% of the pathway of the courses, you can actually get a certificate as well for your levels, which is super cool. I'm just such a big fan of Lingoda and the Sprint is such a special event. So I didn't want you to miss out on that. So click the link below if you're curious, if you want to learn more about signing up before August 8th. And thanks to Lingoda partnering with me on this video, we've got a discount code for you. So if you use the road ROSIE08, you can get the equivalent of 20 euros or 25 US dollars off your Lingoda Sprint investment when you sign up. So if that sounds like an exciting challenge to you, I freaking loved it. Again, click the link below and you can learn all about it. Okay, so let's talk about some of the things that I really, really don't like about France that I'd kind of forgotten about and I'm like, oh yeah, that's a thing. So the first thing that comes to mind for me are the scammers. There are so many scammers and I know that I've spoken on this channel around physical you know scammers in the streets of Paris trying to get you to play games trying to you know take your money pickpocket you while you're not looking all that kind of stuff this is different you come to France you start receiving texts calls I'm talking a call per day right in the household like that's what I've been experiencing of people trying to scam you out of money me myself since arriving in France I have received several scam emails and they're pretty well done, to be honest. One even said, you've got a parcel from Australia Post. It's waiting for you. We need your details to be able to deliver it. Like, they, they can be quite elaborate, to be honest. And, you know, obviously I have the reflex as a digital native to check the email address that it came from, but other people wouldn't. And they wouldn't be doing this if it didn't work to some extent. And I just think it's so sad how many scammers are out there and they're just targeting people over and over again through so many different means and you have to be very, very alert when you're in France. The next thing I wanna talk about is just things not working. Things can be so hard administratively and they just 
don't work. I won't even go into this as an example, but believe me when I say we spent months trying to get a debit card for France, trying to get a card, a visa, whatever that we can use to pay for things while we're in France. Neil still had a bank account open here and it was such a drama. Like we tried for months and months and months. It just wasn't possible. He had to open a different kind of account, which costs like, you know, 20 New Zealand dollars per month just to, for it to exist. Like it was like, so, and he couldn't have a card attached to his savings account. And it was just such a drama. And then you had to prove this and show this. And oh gosh, it was just like, we had to let it go. We ended up going with a card with WISE. They used to be called Transfer WISE. WISE, that are, um, you know, international money transfer. 14 New Zealand dollars, one off, never have to pay again. And we've just been using that and it has worked beautifully so we just ended up doing that but you know it's like you know you go to get a sim card for your phone you just want you know a simple sim card that you can put some money on it and it will last for three months we're here for three months and they need proof of address they need proof of a french bank account they need all of these different things and we're like okay well you know can we give Niels's dad's address can we give Niels's dad's bank account no it has to be in your name all of these things just wouldn't work it was so hard so we're like okay cool so we'll go and get a prepaid card then went and got a prepaid card with SFR and of course it was just hard we went to SFR themselves to get the sim card and they're like no we don't sell the sim cards I'm not at SFR to get an SFR a sim card you'll have to go to a tobacco, a tobacco shop okay so we go to the tobacco shop we get our SFR cards and these like paper top-ups <laughs> super old school with a little code on them so we topped up our phones but we had to create accounts on the website and of course you'd put in your details and it wouldn't work and then you'd get the message it's uh, impossible to fail it you know like impossible to do the recharge at this time like it just wasn't working so we you know had to call them and blah 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 anyways it was just a bit of drama but eventually got the sim card working yes think it's fine. Thank you. Beaten the system. Then three days later, my SIM card stops working. Of course it does. Of course it does. Um, no phone reception, no mobile reception, internet wouldn't work, nothing. So I go back to SFR because I was like, okay, they didn't sell us the SIM card, but like they provide the network, they provide the service. And they're like, no, no, madam, on fait pas ça, like we don't have a service like that. We can't help you. Uh, you're going to have to go back to the tobacco shop from which you bought the card so I was like okay off we go so off we went to the tobacco store where we bought the card to tell them that my sim card wasn't working and his response was c'est pas possible c'est pas possible que ça marche pas it's not possible that it doesn't work pas possible and I was like well si c'est bien possible like yeah it's possible because um, I put it in my husband's phone put my husband's sim card in my phone my phone's not the problem everyone else's sim card works in my phone the sim card's issue. It's like, well, we've never had an issue with them. So, voila. Anyway, Niels was with me, thank gosh, and he was helping me fight for this. Eventually, they were like, okay, fine. We can send your sim card back to get it checked by SFR. And I was like, oh gosh, how long is this going to take? They're like, what we'll need is your proof of purchase, my receipt. Cool, I kept that. I know better. I'm, I'm in France. I know that I need to keep those. And we'll need the emballage, the packaging. Like, like, you know, the square cardboard packaging that a SIM card comes in. You, you know, you open it up, you take your SIM card out and you put the SIM card in your phone. They needed the packaging. I was like, I'm not sure I have the packaging still. I've got the receipt, you've got the number on the SIM card, you've got the part code on the SIM card, you've got everything. And they're like, no, it's not going to work then. We need that. We can't help you. There's nothing we can do. So I had 35 euros on the SIM card and I was like, Oh, okay. Anyway, I ended up calling SFR to see if there's anything that they could do for me, if we could transfer the money on the card. Of course they couldn't, it's a no. But they did say, oh, by the way, like I can see why it's not working. And I was like, oh, awesome. And it's because SFR themselves had flagged me as spam, as a scam account, as like something in their system had triggered like a spam alert. I have no idea what. Maybe it's because I tried to log into their internet website so many times because it wasn't working, I don't know but got flagged and they're like we've actually turned your sim card off and i was like cool can you turn it back on then and they were like yeah but we're gonna need um you to send us an email with your passport with your address with like it was like a whole freaking dossier but it will be unlocked in two to five working days and i was like oh, i mean that's annoying to not have a phone to not even be able to receive a text send a text to anything have 4g when i'm out, out in town to use google maps like no phone for five days but like 
okay, I'll, I'll do it. You know, like it's, it's worth it. I don't want to lose my 35 euros. Of course, on the fifth day, it still wasn't working. I went and just bought a new SIM card and let the 35 euros go. But that's like, that's not an exceptional story. That's not something that happens once a year. That is any time you need to achieve something in France, like to do with paperwork or setting things up. Oh my gosh, it's just so hard. It's just so hard and they're not helpful. Um, you know, when it comes to people in, in customer service position. So that's just like a little taster. I hope it gives, like sends the point home of like thing, like there's this thing around things just not working here. And by the way, to this point, they have this way of being so patronizing. They really talk to you like you are the dumbest person on the planet. Like, um, say papa si because I'm ash pas madame. Like they're like, have you tried turning it on and off again? And when I didn't have the packaging, they were like, mm, I mean, it's, that's why you need to keep the packaging madame. Like, you know, you should have known better. Almost like you're this dumb or stupid little kid. You know, they really don't like, they really talk to you like, ah, well, what did you expect? You expected me to be able to help you? You didn't keep the packaging of your SIM card? Oh, no, 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 no. Life doesn't work like that. That's like really the attitude and you're just sitting there like, breathe, just breathe. <laughs> Another kind of service situation that I've already encountered in France, and this is a different point. So this is around needing to become the mean person to get your way. When I was coming to France, I wanted to keep doing my poll. So I looked at my, the closest poll studio in Avignon and I found their website. They were just, Google Maps said that it was 20 minutes from um, Niels's dad's place. And so I went on the website and I bought a 10 pass because it was a lot more financially advantageous than just buying one class at a time. So I bought a 10 pass, was super excited. So I arrived in France and I booked my first course and I gave the guy a call and we said, hey, I'll come 10 minutes early so we can meet each other. We can talk a little bit about my level and I'll come on in. Long story short, Google Maps wasn't up to date. They're closing all these streets in Avignon. You can't drive through the center anymore. Anyway, long story short, we were driving for 45 minutes in traffic and we weren't even halfway there yet. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not gonna work. This is not possible, especially because I don't have my own car here. I have to ask people to like borrow their car to drive me. It's just like, I was like, damn, it's not gonna work, what a shame. So I called the guy and I was like, look, I can't make it to this course. I'm so sorry, I'm just gonna be late. Um, please charge me for the course. Of course, take my money. Um, but can you please refund the nine other like sessions? And it was like, bah, no, you know, like, no, I don't have to do that. It's like, you should have met me before you took the 10 card. You should have done this before you took it. I was like, I was just trying to be organized, right? I was just sorting out my life. I was just getting things locked in. Like, and he's like, you should have, you should have, you should have. And I was like, uh, okay, but you're, are you going to take, like, keep 200 euros for a service you didn't deliver? You're really going to do that, you know? Just completely shocked. And everyone, every French person I told around me was like, leave him one star reviews, call him out by name on your YouTube channel. You need to go in there and do this. You need to go in there and say that. And all of the solutions were super mean. And I was like, no, like I don't want to become that person. I don't want to become a mean, angry person to get my way. They were all suggesting that. They were well then it's up to you, huh? We're just suggesting it's a solution. If you don't want to do that, uh, you know, it's up to you. And it's like, what a shame that that has to be the only way like to become nasty and maybe even if it was written in the terms and conditions no refunds or whatever okay i kind of get that but like i don't know in new zealand just morally like they'd be like look like here, i'll take i'll take the money for one of them but here's the rest kind of thing or i'll give you 50 percent back or whatever it's just it, it's just so immoral to me to keep 200 euros of someone's money when you didn't do anything another thing that we love about france are comments about bodies so we all know that, I mean, I've done a whole video on this, but um, the French and their fat shaming and their, their uh, like, grossophobie, it's called in French, and, and, and they've got this obsession that, you know, if you take even one kilo of, like, you're not overweight yet, but if you gain even one kilo, it's so bad for your health and you should really be careful and all that kind of stuff. We know, we know that about the French. I've actually been preparing myself psychologically for comments, for remarks, for all of this kind of thing, because uh, since leaving France, I've gained four kilos. And I was like, oh gosh, what are they going to say to me? Like I was even preparing with my therapist about it. Like it's, it's like, it's just so obvious that it was going to happen. But yeah, it's just crazy how comments on bodies are acceptable like Niels was sitting on the corner of the of the pool side and I just found this so crazy because Niels is so fit he works out for about two hours a day he bikes everywhere he's a part of four different sports teams like he's so fit all of my friends tease him for how fit he is he's just like an energizer bunny and he was sitting on the corner of the pool like just sitting down and of course like any human being when you sit down you have like little tummy rolls well mine are bigger than his but like you have tummy rolls right 
And his mum made a comment about it being pizza dough. His stomach looked like pizza dough. And it was kind of like a loving joke, if you can say that. Because um, she was like, oh, it's, it's like you're getting pizza dough like my tummy, you know. But she's like, oh, you have pizza dough tummy and stuff. And I was like, A, no, he doesn't. But like B, don't say that. Like don't comment on your child's body in that way. And don't comment on your 33-year-old son's body but like you know it was just sort of like oh my gosh like I'd forgotten about that that, that that's okay to make remarks that like you can say to kids you can say to teenagers you're getting chubby you're getting this that like you've gained weight like and and parents will say that to their adult children I know it's coming from a place of love but it is really shocking and I think you know more and more we know the effects psychologically that can have on your self-trust your self-love your your image or you know all that kind of thing and there's a difference between gaining weight and and like getting extremely unhealthy and it, and it really being a high risk factor. Even from the health perspective, it's it's like, is it from the health perspective or is it from a looks perspective? You know, it's sort of like, there's a limit there that I'm not really 100% com comfortable with. And on that note, they refer to people as the fat one, you know, they'll be like, oh, you know, like, le gros, le gros, il est gusteur. Or like, oh, la grosse, you know, like, like talking about my friend being like, ah, la grosse, ah oui, je vois. Like, oh, uh, oh, the fatty, yeah, 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 I see. And I'm like, fuck, like, <laughs> you know, like we don't, we don't say that. <laughs> um, so that's another thing as well. Another thing that I've really realized since coming back to France, and to be fair, it's summer holidays in the south of France, my gosh, but the traffic, the traffic on the roads, there are so many people here. Um, I will never let New Zealanders complain about the traffic again. Um, just like miles and miles, I put a wee video here, miles and miles and miles and miles of, of, of traffic in certain directions it's absolutely crazy you've got a lot of pollution on the roads there are signs being like please drive 20 kilometers slower there's so much pollution in the air right now and on top of that which is really interesting but roads are privatized in France and so you have to pay tolls to get like basically anywhere and now I can understand why French people don't necessarily like love driving a lot and going on long uh, road trips because it's freaking expensive by the time you pay for the petrol plus all the tolls in Marseille we just took a, a tunnel to get you partway through town. Like you, it's a bit quicker going through town. Five euros sixty to take a tunnel. It can be super expensive and you're just, yeah, paying tolls all the time. And sure, it's not like horrific money, but it's just interesting because it does add up. And it, I think what's interesting about it is the, the fact that that auto route, that motorways can be privatized and owned by private companies. All right, last point is around the smoking. And... I think New Zealand's a little bit exceptional in this way because they're so focused on being smoke free. Um, there are all of these government campaigns, like they've done all sorts of things, they've put all sorts of measures in place for that to be the goal. And just culturally, societally as well, we don't find smoking sexy. We don't find smoking cool. It's kind of like we've moved past that stage of almost like the rebellious adolescent of like smoking's cool. Like, oh, I think culturally we get, we're, we're getting a little bit past that. The smoking in France is extreme like parents smoking inside just in front of you on the couch like exposing you to secondhand smoke like me going to take a taxi and the guy's smoking in his car and and being like oh are you are you available and he's like does it look like I'm available of course I'm available I wouldn't be here if I'm not available you know I was just like smoking away and I was like oh it looks like you're having a break you know um to go into a co-working space in Avignon and having all of these ashtrays along the windowsill because people just pop their heads out of, of, of the window and smoke. But of course, I think what smokers don't realize is that if you don't smoke, like you're breathing your smoke out the window, but it's like coming back in, right? And we can smell it and it's still really unpleasant. I mean, my parents are both smokers. I've grown up with smoke. I'm not, you know, I get it. But as a non-smoker, honestly, it does smell and it's super unpleasant. And so it's like having no regard or respect for others who don't smoke and just like thinking it's cool to smoke in front of their face and stuff. It's just like, it's something that I've completely lost touch with. All right, so that was everything on my list. I love you, France. I mean, I've just noticed these things and I'm just like, oh my gosh, but I don't want to hate on France. I don't want you to hate on France, but I just think it's interesting to observe these, these parts of a country, of a culture that aren't 100% romanticized. You know, there's this massive thing around France, around Paris. It's so perfect. It's so, and it's like, you know, there are other sides to the culture too. And so I had completely forgotten about these. They don't take any mental headspace up for me on the day to day, but just through coming back after three years with the freshest eyes, it hits you in the face. I'd love to hear about your experience in France. I'd love to hear about whether or not you can relate to these things too, either as a French person or someone who's visited France, lived in France, or are these things that you would find shocking or are they things that are completely normalized in your culture too? I love reading the comments. It's honestly one of my favorite parts. So please do share your thoughts, your reaction, your feedback down below. I am doing lots of videos while in France. So while you're waiting for the next one, you can be binging these videos right here. And otherwise I will see you here next time on the Not Even French YouTube channel.